Hi, welcome to Budget MTD Decks. All magic fun, all cards on our dollar. I'm David. And I'm Stefan. And today we're going to be looking at all the blue cards in Ixalan. But before we get started, we'd like to remind you guys that we have a Patreon page. So if you want to help us make more videos, you want to support the channel, go to patreon.com slash budget MTG Decks. So we're going to validate them for limited, draft and sealed. Sealed like the pre-release that's upcoming. Yeah, so you're going to be getting uh, six packs of Ixalan to make your uh, sealed deck with. And we're going to be evaluating our cards according to our three-tiered system. Tier one are your super, super strong cards. These are your bombs, your unconditional removal. These are basically the cards that are going to be winning you the game. Then we've got the tier two cards. These are really, really strong push you into a color or ought to include if you're already in that color. And your T3 uh, cards are the ones which you're going to be using to filling out your deck. So those are your filler cards. And the rest of the cards are going to be putting those aside. So without further ado, let's have a look at the common cards. The first of our common cards is Dive Down. For a single blue, it's an instant that gives target creature you control plus zero, plus three, and hexproof till the end of turn. Now, this is actually a pretty decent combat trick because the substantial boost to the toughness means it's gonna be winning uh, the combat. And additionally, you can also use it outside of combat when somebody's trying to use uh, premium removal against your uh, killer cards or your bomb or something like that. So it has, it has dual function, both as a protection, spell and also as a combat trick which makes it and also it's only one blue which makes it pretty good filler yeah it's instant speed one blue so the one blue you don't um, have to work that hard to keep it open and three toughness is a lot yeah so that's why we like it next one is opt it's a blue instant square one and we've seen square already but you have to look at the top of card of your library maybe put a card on the bottom of your library so you can keep it on top, keep, uh, put it on the bottom, and after that you draw a card. It's a one mana, like we said before, and it's not that hard to keep it open. It's instant speed. You can look at the top card, and if you don't want it, you can draw the next one. And if it's what you want, then you can draw it anyways. Right away. Yeah. So I really like this one, and I always want to include it, so tier 2, because we're uh, looking to our deck, and this card helps us dig to it. And the downside of playing it is not big enough to say, well, it's not worth it because there's no, nearly no cost for it. No, uh, basically, as we know already, Scry 1 is essentially half a draw. So what this says is for one blue, we get a draw and a half. And that's a, that's a good deal. And as Stefan already said, this is uh, limited. So you have less good cards and you want to dig through your, for your good cards. So uh, drawing cards is, uh, is nice. Next, we have Shorekeeper for a single blue. We get a 0-3 Trilobite. Now this guy, uh, well, he's just a 0-3, but he also has an ability for eight. So for a seven and a blue, so for eight mana, we can tap it and sacrifice it to draw three cards. We just said before, drawing cards is good, but drawing cards for eight mana, not so good because it's uh, simply the investment is very high. Early game, it does nothing because it doesn't even have a single power, so it doesn't stop anybody from attacking you, even with their one ones. So it's not really slowing your opponent down. And finally, if you top deck this, you feel bad because you pop it down and you can't even sacrifice it immediately to get those cards. So that's, you're going to put that card aside. Exactly. And if you draw a late game, would you really want to pay nine mana for three cards? Spread over two turns because you can't even do it in one turn. Exactly. No, so it's, no. it's bad. Next one, Spell Pierce. A blue instant counter target non creature spell unless it's controller pays to generic mana. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not as great because you want to counter creature cards, and it's only one mana, but you can counter removal. But most of the time, it will be dead in your hand. And if you top deck it late game or whatever, you really need to have a target for it, so that's why I just put it aside. And with limited, um, you will have a lot more mana then spells you'll cost most of the times. It's just bad. Yeah, just, just put it aside. Next card, Siren's Ruse for one and a blue. So for two mana, it's an instant. We're gonna be exiling target creature we control and then returning that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If, it's, if a pirate card was exiled this way, we draw a card. So in essence, we're just gonna be flickering one of our things so we could protect it, for example, and if that happens to be a pirate, we get to draw a card. Well, this is exactly one of those protection. We're gonna protect our bomb cards which is two mana, which is too expensive. And additionally, it won't help you win any combat. The situational clause that you draw a card is also very small, small chance that you'll have that. So uh, yeah, just put it aside. It's not gonna help you. Shaper's Apprentice is one on the blue. It's a two one Merfolk wizard. Shaper's Apprentice is flying as long as you control another Merfolk. So it's 
uh, two one for two, which we don't like. And if you have a merfolk, it is flying, but still it's only still one toughness, so it will die to everything in the air, anyways. So just put it aside. Yeah, I don't like my uh, two ones. No, me no, neither. No, exactly. Then we have Shipwreck Looter for one and a blue. So for two mana, we get a two one human pirate. So once again, we're going to look at this and go, ah, that body is terrible. We don't like it. Let's have a look at what, it, what ability it has. It has Raid. That means that if you attack this turn already with a creature, then we get to draw a card and then discard a card. It's looting. That's why it's called Shipwreck Looter. Now, looting, we do like. So that means that actually this card now all of a sudden has become a filler card. Why? Because early game, even if it doesn't have the Raid, okay, fine, you have your 2-1 for two, which is not great, but at least it does something. It'll it'll be able to kill bears. And then late game, if you attack with something, then you're gonna be able to loot, which allows you to dig for that bomb, allows you to dig for that premium removal. So that's actually pretty decent. So that pushes it from a card that will be unplayable back into a decent filler card. Yeah, like we said before, you really want to dig to your deck. So that's why this is a pretty good card. One with the wind, one and a blue aura, enchant creature, enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and has flying. And we normally don't like these cards because enchantment, you play it, someone moves it, and you down two cards. It but removes your creature yeah, that you enchant with. Yeah, yeah exactly. But um, it gets plus two, plus two, and flying. The flying is really important, and if you put any, um, plus two, plus two, anything, it will be the biggest thing in the air like 90% of the time at least. Yeah. Uh, one thing that pushes you over the head, you, over the edge, usually we see these cards and it'll say it'll be something like uh, four mana. Four mana, it'll give something plus two plus two flying. That's something that you would normally get. And then by that point in the game, uh, they will have gotten their removal. They will be able to destroy it and the, you will be out two cards. But this thing only costs two mana. That is extremely cheap for giving a creature evasion and plus two plus two. Just look at the scenario that you, on turn two, you play a uh, you play your two two your normal bear and then turn three you enchant it with this now you have a four four flyer attacking on turn three now that is going to end the game real quick and especially the removal that's available at that point in time of the game will not be able to get rid of that four four flyer uh, in ninety percent of the cases so uh, so they're going to have a big problem you're going to be doing tons and tons of damage before it gets removed and that'll totally make it worth it especially for just a common two mana. Exactly, yeah. and um, it's even good late game, like you have bigger creatures as well, then have a bigger flyer. Yeah. So that's why it's tier 3. Exception to the rule, this yeah. one. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, next card we have Depths of Desire for 2 and a blue, so for 3 mana. We have an instant, and we're going to return to your creature to its owner's hand, so it's a bounce spell. And we're also going to be able to create a colorless treasure artifact token, which has tap. Sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So that's pretty nice. So that's, those, those treasures are pretty cool because they color fix us and they ramp us for one turn. And of course, with this one, we're instant speed going to bounce a creature of our opponent, which is actually really nice together because we, uh, if it would just be bounce, I wouldn't like it so much, but because, and it's instant speed. So at the end of the turn, we're gonna be able to return it. The next turn, they gotta cast that creature again. Then it's got, it's got summoning signal, so it can't attack. So then they have to wait till the turn after that. So push them back so far. And conversely, we got that artifact. The next turn, we're up one mana ahead of them. So we're even faster than they are. So the, the tempo speed, uh, uh, tempo, different, swing, yeah. tempo swing is is really, really big and only for three mana. I, I kind of like that. So that's, uh, that's tier two for me. Yeah. It's it's just so nice that uh, the treasures are really cool. Yeah. Just like it sits there, and if you need some mana, then use it. Yeah. So you don't really have to use it immediately. You can hold them and wait until you have to get your bomb and play the bomb exactly. so much earlier. Yeah. Super strong. Love it. Siren Lookout. Two and a blue. It's a one two Siren Pirate with flying, which isn't that exciting. But when Siren Lookout enters the battlefield, it explores. So it can be a 2-3, or uh, it can draw you a card. So I think for 3 mana, 1-2, um, uh, flying that has that upside, I think that's worth as a filler. Yeah, uh, in case you didn't see the, the white video, Explore basically says either we're going to be getting a plus 1, plus 1 counter, and we've got kind of a scry effect, so we have to look at the card and we get to put it in the graveyard or leave it on the top, or we get to, uh, if it's a land, put it into our hand, which of course is kind of a draw 
only if it's a lambda. So that's that's actually pretty sweet because if we have in two uh, two thirds of the time, if we have a two three flyer for three mana, that's an awesome deal. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you explain it to them, they don't want to look at the white card for the explanation. Oh yeah, you have to watch the white video. You have to watch the white video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ta uh, water trap weaver for two and a blue. So for three mana, it's a two two Murpha wizard. Okay, so we're already paying a little bit more for that 2-2 body. Let's see what the ability is. Whenever this guy enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, and then that creature doesn't untap towards controller's next untap step. So that's pretty cool because it actually does slow your opponent down. Uh, you can attack this turn a little bit easier, and of course, in their turn, they won't be able to attack you with that thing. Uh, and the body is actually not bad. So for that extra one mana premium, it's a pretty nice effect. Yeah, it's a really nice effect for yeah. only one mana. Um, already on a card that you want to play. Exactly. Very good filler. Yeah. Very good filler. Sailor of Means. Two and a blue. It's a 1 4 human pirate. When Sailor of Means enters the battlefield, clear colors, treasure artifact token. So it's a 1 4, which isn't great, but it's not bad at all. For 3 mana, and you get a treasure token. So it's a good filler. Yeah, just see it as a way to uh, power you into your uh, more powerful spells with still being exactly the point in the curve where your opponent's two twos will have a big problem getting through this. Because after all, even the three three will have a problem, but this is more important. Even if it would have been a one three, that still would have been okay as well. Yeah. Because it's at that point in time in the game where it can stop those two twos. Then we have cancel for one and two blues. So for three mana, it's an instant that allows us to counter any spell. We see this almost every set, happens all the time. And we always tell you to put it aside because in uh, limited, you really want to use your mana as efficiently as possible. Actually, that's pretty much all magic. You want to <laughs> use your mana as efficiently as possible. And you don't really want to hold, uh, hold on to your mana and not cast other spells. So if you have a lot of counter spells, you're holding out that mana. And if people don't play the things that you want to counter, then you basically wasted your turn. And that's a very dangerous proposition to be in. So sometimes we will take uh, very cheap counter spells if possible, uh, if they also counter creatures, because mm -hmm. that's what you want. Uh, but when it comes to three mana or higher, then, then we don't recommend it. So we would put that aside. Next one, Pirate's Prize. Three and a blue, it's a sorcery. Draw three cards, uh, draw two cards. Create a colorless treasure uh, artifact token. Um, so for four mana, sorcery, you draw two cards and you create a um, treasure. No, it's a lot, and it's really expensive, but it does get you a treasure which will ramp you up and you draw two cards, so you might um, will need it next turn. So that's um, what I. That's the reason why I put it in tier three instead of excite, yeah. because of the treasure, um, because that's really important. Yeah, I don't mind paying uh, a little bit of mana uh, for uh, spells that draw us cards, because usually you don't want to be drawing all your cards super early in the game. You you'll usually save that for a little bit later. And this one is right on the point in time when you will probably run out of land cards in your hand, and then allowing you to draw it and giving you that treasure, which will also give you extra mana, allows you to power through and be able to get those six drops out potentially, whereas otherwise you might have been mana screwed. So that, that, that's very exciting. Headwater Sentries is next for three and a blue. We get a 2-5 Merfolk Warrior. That's all it does. It's vanilla, but you know what? Vanilla is sometimes the flavor you want because 2-5 uh, for this price is actually really good and a very, very decent filler. It uh, kills the bears, people can't attack into that, and you can even stop 4-4s four coming at you. And as we know, 4-4s four are some of the biggest stuff on the battlefield. So it's a really decent uh, uh, Pillar Field Ox, I believe, was the white one. Was it? Yes. And one a ground. Three in a blue instant, put target artifact or creature on top of its owner's library. I really like it because um, it's instant speed, and you can put a creature or an artifact on top of its owner's library. So, like we said before, the instant speed bounces into his hand. That's already nice. But this puts it top of the library, which means um, they will lose the next draw too. And that's really important. That's why I always want to play this. Yeah. So where the other one uh, pushes you forward by giving you extra mana, this one pushes pushes them even further back by making them also lose the draw on top of having to cast it again. And I think four mana for being able to do that instant speed is uh, well, it's just on the edge. I think it's uh, I would always play it, yeah. which always it play. shouldn't be five mana. Then you're getting too expensive. But anyway, next storm sculptor for three and a blue. So for four mana, we have a three-two merfolk wizard with 
unblockable, it says it can't be blocked. And whenever it enters the battlefield, we're gonna return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Now that is a pretty big downside. So you may say, okay, we're never playing this, but we have to remember that evasion is strong, menace is good, trample is good, flying is awesome, and can't be blocked is the king of all of them. So this is super strong when you're looking at this, a creature like that with already two power, it already becomes very playable and three means it's going, these are the kind of cards that are gonna be winning you games as well. The downside, you have to be careful with it because if you top deck this and, and somebody just kill all your creatures, then you have a big problem because obviously you won't be able to, uh, to play it because it will bounce itself. Uh, but in any other situation, it will be worth it to take one of your cheaper creatures that you played early game, your two twos, returning that one and then playing this one because this, is, this puts a clock on the game and they have to beat you soon. Otherwise, this one will finish the game for them. Yeah, and even then, like bouncing a creature you control, it's um, we've seen those kind of cards a lot of times already. And enter the battlefield like, abilities. Yeah, yeah. But then, but it, like bouncing when someone okay, enters. Yeah. But like we said, you said at the battlefield abilities, it's not always a downside. Yeah, that's true. That's so. also um, what I really like about this because sometimes I really want to bounce my creature because I have enter battlefield trigger. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's it's actually uh, it's it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Exactly. That's why I like it. Yeah, I like it. Phosphorus <laughs> pirates, four and a blue. It's a three four human pirate, which is only not that bad. And when he enters the battlefield, create two colorless uh, treasure artifacts. So it comes in for five mana. It's a three four, not that bad, and you get two treasures. So I say just always play a tier two. Yeah. 3-3-4, three, three, better than a 2-5, clearly you're paying extra, but the fact that it pushes those, gives you the 2 extra mana is yeah. really insane. The common, huh? Yeah. Nice, nice. Then we get to the last of the commons, and that is Wind Strider for 4 and a blue, so for 5 mana we get a 3-3 three, three Flash Flying Merfolk Wizard. Now, as we know, flying really good, so we're already playing this anyway, but the fact that it has flash essentially means that it is also removal because you're always gonna be playing this when they attack you with a couple of creatures and then you're gonna flash this thing in, kill their 2-2, two -two. then next turn it essentially has haste and you're, you can attack with it right away. And, and uh, yeah, three in the air is uh, just like the other, the 3-2 is gonna be ending the game really fast. Always play it, super nice. Uh, yeah, removal and evasion. Exactly. Super cool. All right, those are the commons. Let's have a look at the uncommons. The first uncommon is Simon Storm Tamer. It's a one blue, it's a one one Simon Pirate Wizard with flying. And a one one blue sacrifice Simon Storm Tamer, can't target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. Normally, one ones with flying or one ones in general we don't like. But with um, abilities, only one mana that you can counter something that will target you or target another creature you control. And th I think that's really important because it's, it's um, protection and it's a body. So that's really nice. And so tier two, I always want to play it because it's so cheap. Yeah, the fact is that it's a, sp a spell or ability as well. So it really covers all the bases. Yeah, so nice. Then we have Stormfleet Aerialist for one and a blue. So for two mana, we get a one, two human fly, uh, human pirate with flying. So once again, we don't like our one powered flyers, but this guy's got raid. When this guy enters the battlefield, this guy enters with a plus one, plus one counter on it if you attack with the creature this turn. That's the raid ability. So uh, early game, yes, you could in a pinch play it, but I would almost certainly never play it on turn two as your first creature. I would just wait later in the game and make sure that I attack with something to make sure that we pay two mana for a 2-3. And as we know, 2-3 flyers re are really, really good. And only paying two mana, that's a great deal. So that's a great filler right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perilous Forge uh, Voyage. One and a blue instant. Return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. If it was confirmed mana cost two or less, square two. So it bounces everything you want. And if it was a small thing, then you can also scry too. And that's actually really nice. But most of the times you probably want to bounce bigger things. So the scry too is not that relevant most of the times and are just a filler. Yeah, remember that if you do decide to uh, bounce an opponent's uh, artifact, those treasures, that that is uh, converted mana cost zero. So you would be able to scry and that would be very, they would be very annoyed that you got rid of that. But most, most of the time you'll want to get rid of their bomb. Yeah, but if you but if you um, target a treasure, they just sacrifice the response. Yeah, oh, that's a good point, huh? But they might not be able to play anything with it. 
That doesn't matter. Yeah, but you lost a card into oh, mana, true. so so don't do that. That's a bad <laughs> idea. This is just an example of what you shouldn't do. All right, great. We move on to the next one. Favorable winds for one in a blue. It's an enchantment. It says that creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus one. We're gonna put that card aside. In constructed, this is a lot of fun. In commander, it's great when you build around it. In limited, you're just not gonna have enough flyers to make this thing count. Uh, or you're gonna have one or you're gonna have the other. Uh, once again, we uh, we don't like to play too synergistically when it comes to uh, limited because you just don't have the chance of having all the cards that you need to have an optimal uh, strategy with synergy, which you can, of course, in constructed. So this guy's we're gonna put that aside, even though it's an awesome picture as well with those two uh, flying dragon drake type creatures, serpent flying. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. So the next one, kill the cause, one in the blue. It's sorcery, draw two cards, then discard a card unless you attack with a creature this turn. It's only two mana, you draw two cards, you have to discard one card, which is not that bad. And if you attack with a creature, you can keep two cards for only two mana, and that's why I like it and, and put in tier two, always play it. Yeah, there's not, I can't think of a situation where this wouldn't uh, push you ahead from the situation where yeah. you were. Uh, yeah, e even getting rid of that card, you might have just a dead card at that point in time. He still gets you closer to that card that you really need. Exactly. It's good early game because only two mana, and it's good late game because it will still net you a card yeah. and you saw two cards. Yeah, I can completely see a scenario, a scenario where at the beginning of the game you really needed to make sure you hit your land draw, and late game you really use it to hit those bombs and removal. So, <laughs> perfect. Uh, River Sneak is next for one and a blue. We get a 1-1 one, one. Merfolk Warrior. This guy can't be blocked. That's nice. Once again, the king of unblockable. But what's not nice is that it's a 1-1, one, one, so it's not going to be doing that much. But it also states that whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, we're going to give this guy plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Now, this is a perfect example of super synergistic card if you build around Merfolk. In reality, it's just not going to do enough, and we're going to put that card aside. Yeah, because if you draw a late game, then you already played your Merfolks if you have any, and it will be a 1-1 one, one that's unblockable, but yeah, I don't think it will be doing enough. Yeah, an early game, you might get it to become a 2-2 two, two, or a 3-3, three, three, and then you did that, that one time of damage, because it's not like, it's get count, like it gets counters. Yeah, exactly. That's what's the downside of it. Lookout's Dispersal. Two and a blue instant. Lookout's Dispersal costs one less uh, to cast if you control a pirate. Can't target spell unless the controller pays for um, mana. Um, three mana counter spell. It may be two mana if you have a pirate, but is it worth it? Still not, because we still have cancel and that will counter anything, um, regardless how many mana someone has. Just put it aside. Yeah, exactly. There's just too many. To even think about the situation where you where you could play it and you think, oh, this is great, and then they do have the extra four mana, and you're just, ah, it's just such a feel bad. Uh, next, we have Navigator's Ruin for two and a blue. It's an enchantment. It has raid, so if we attack this turn with a creature, uh, target opponent puts the top four cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Now, this is we have, we're gonna we haven't talked about it yet this week, but we do so every single time we do a set review. Mill cards seem very fun because we uh, we're getting rid of cards from our opponent's library going into the graveyard, and then you may get the feeling like, hey, I might mill away their bomb. I might mill away that super awesome card. I might mill away that land drop that they needed. But what you could also do is you could mill the top cards that they don't need and mill them straight to the card that they need, straight to their bomb. And it's all just statistics and it makes no difference if you get rid of cards from your opponent's library because you either get them further away from what they want or you get them closer, but it statistically makes no difference. So put this card aside, don't mill your opponents. Uh, it rarely ever works. Milling um, seems like fun because it's a psychological thing, like you can see um, what people will not draw anymore and some people get really upset about that and I think like it's all random anyways, I might have not drawn these cards to begin with, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, don't play it. Deep Wood Waters, two and a blue enchantment, whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue Merfolk creature token with Hexproof. So whenever you play Merfolk, you get an extra Merfolk, but do you have enough Merfolk? Like we said before, the other one, 
um, if it's late game, you're not going to do anything with it, so just put it aside. Yeah, especially uh, the merfolk that it's creating are not that exciting either because they're one ones with hex move, and exactly the one ones are not going to be the tokens which people are going to be targeting with their removal because nobody cares about that. So, th yeah, this is not that exciting. Uh, if they would be the one one vampires with life link, at least that's something, you know? Yeah, at least you get life from yeah. it because, yeah. Who's gonna, not. who's gonna kill a one with Doom Wolfel? Nobody. Alright, but we're also not gonna be having too many of them either. Then we move on to Starfleet Spy for two and a blue. So for three mana we get a 2-2 two, two human pirate. Okay, so it better have an ability because otherwise it would be too expensive. But when it, So it has raid, so if we attack this turn, when it enters the battlefield, uh, we're gonna draw a card. Okay, very simple. So for three mana, for the extra one mana premium, should if we made sure that we attack with something, is going to replace itself. That's just on the edge of filler. I'm okay with that. Uh, even if you played early game and you don't have anything else, just putting a 2-2 down for 3, it's okay. You know, that's still at the point in time where you're going to be trading with the bears. And late game, you will be attacking with stuff. And then you're going to pop this down an extra body, plus it's going to dig you one more card. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, card was always a good thing. So for one extra mana attacking, which you already want to do, Okay, we're fine with that. Yeah. Then I call a master. Three and uh, a blue, it's two two human pirate. When then I call a master enters the battlefield, you may search your library for equipment or vehicle card, reveal it, put it in your hand and shuffle your library. A two two for four, expensive, you search for equipment or vehicle card. If you have it it's nice, but if you have one probably I still won't want to play it because it's expensive, you have to play the other one, just don't. No, it's not worth it. No, exactly. Just put it aside. Exactly. Tempest Collar is next for two and two blue. So for four mana, we get a two, three human wizard. Uh, when the guy enters the battlefield, tap all creatures, target opponent control. This is huge. I'm saying right away, tier two, you ought to include this if you're in blue because uh, early game, sure, the body is fine, a two, three, that can stop the bears and everything, cool. But late game is where it really shines, coming in and making sure that you can swing it with the entire team, and you still got this guy as a blocker after that. So uh, this is the kind of card that late game wins games. Yeah, exactly. Um, people will not expect all their creatures to be tapped. No, yeah, it's gonna get ugly. Yeah. But a good thing for you. <laughs> yes, it's gonna get ugly for them. You're gonna be sitting pretty. <laughs> elemental, the last of the commons, at 3 and 2 blue, it's a 4-4 elemental with flying. We want our um, big flyers, 5 mana, 4-4, four, four. we are happy with that on the ground, but this one has flying, play it, just tier 2, just play it. Yeah, once again, also wins games. Exactly. Super strong. Alright, great, those are the uncommons, let's have a look at the rest. The first of our rares is Search for Ascanta, so for a single mana and a blue, so for two mana, we're gonna have a legendary enchantment, this is one of those flip cards again. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library, you may put it into your graveyard. Then, if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, we're going to, uh, we may transform it, so this is the May one. Um, so what essentially it's kind of like a scry, once again, that kind of that explore mechanic where you're looking at it, instead of going to the bottom of the library or staying on the top of this one, you can choose to have it go into the graveyard and we're going to be filling our graveyard. So later game is going to become Ascansa Ascanta the Sunken Ruin. It's going to turn into a land which can tap for a single blue. We can also pay two and a blue and tap it and look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a non-creature non-land card, and then uh, we can put that into our hand and put the rest at the, at the bottom of our library in any order. Okay, so what this card does is at the beginning it kind of gives us a scry every turn, which is okay. And then later on in the game, much later i think because getting to seven cards in your graveyard if you think about the last games you've had which were in limited your graveyard doesn't get so full so getting to that is going to be really tricky and then the only payoff you've got is an extra la uh, an extra land which is not going to be great late game so it's got to be all focused on the ability and then for three mana you're going to be able to dig for not your bomb yeah. only removal spell it's three mana and this land so yeah. so for four mana essentially yeah. what you're doing so that is just not that's just not that great so normally we put this aside. The reason why we put it on tier three is because still just for two mana being able to sort of scry every turn is okay. I'm okay with that. So yeah. you can you can use it as a filler. Yeah, exactly. For two mana, you can play early game. Like mid game is also really good. 
the top deck in um, late game is a, a bit bad, but still looking at the top of your deck every single turn and getting the option to just put in your graveyard is so relevant. And that's why tier three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With a lot of these cards, the, what pushes them into tier two territory very often is that they're good early and they're good late. And this one's really actually only good early to mid. Yeah. And I wouldn't even transform it, to no, be honest. No, no, really. Actually, that's actually bad. No, just leave it as the enchantment. Much yeah. More, much better. Daring Saboteur. One and a blue, a 2 1 human pirate. And for two and a blue, Daring Saboteur can be blocked this turn. And whenever Daring uh, Saboteur. This combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So, 2-1 uh, for 2, not that exciting. It can be unblockable, so that's really nice. And if it does combat damage, you can loot, which is already really nice too. So, tier 2, always want to play it. It's cheap, it's unblockable, it draws your cards. What more yeah. do you want? Yeah. Well, I would like the name to be Sometimes Unblockable okay, never mind. Looter. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, next. Entrancing Melody for X and 2 blue. Uh, we're going to Sorcery and we're going to be able to gain control of target creature with converted mana cost X. So if we pay 6 mana into this, we're going to be able to get a converted mana cost free uh, 4 creature, sorry. Um, which is actually pretty good. The reason you may think, oh, that is gonna, you're going to put a lot of, you're going to have to put a lot, a lot of mana into this uh, spell to be able to get something good. But remember, that mind control effects are extremely powerful because of two reasons. One, you're removing the best thing that they have. That's their bomb. The best thing that, that's on, that they have on the battlefield, you're taking that away. And number two is you are gaining the best thing that's on the battlefield. So that is a really decent swing and uh, totally worth this card. I would always play it if I was in blue. Yeah. And I guess you have to hold up some treasures. Yeah, if you hoard some treasures, then you can, uh, you can do this. Yeah, exactly. That's the... Um thing you have to keep in mind you have to pay two mana more than the thing costs yeah. so that's um, a bit annoying but still most of the times you'll probably have it anyways yeah but you remember the bombs come out late game which is when people are mana flooded which means you'll probably have the extra two mana to be able to do it yeah so tier two always play it still some big things nice arcane adaption two and a blue enchantment as arcane adaption enter the battlefield choose your creature type adaptation Adaptation, dead. <laughs> yep. Creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to the other types. The, name, uh, the same is true for creature spells you control and creatures cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. So everything changes to a creature type you want. Um, it's addition, yeah, it's to addition to, but it's limited. We have seen some Murphle cards and dinosaur cards. But vampire cards, but is it vampire really cards? Vampire cards, but is it really that important? And I don't think it is. If you lose a um, card from it, it will not really do anything early game. Will not do anything late game. You just put it aside. If you're so heavily going into a certain synergy of uh, tribes, then this card is also not adding to that. Exactly, which is unfortunate. And if you're not going into a synergy then having them all be a certain type also won't help you. So there's just no scenario where this will help you out. Next card is uh, Coppola Warden of Waves for one and two blue. So for three mana, we get a two, two legendary Merfolk Wizard. This guy looks awesome. And it also states that spells your opponents cast that target Merfolk you control cost two extra to cast. And additionally, abilities your opponents uh, want to play to activate. Um, so these are not the spells, but the activation cost also costs two extra to activate. So the both spells and abilities cost more if they want to target your Merfolk, which is pretty cool in a super synergistic constructed deck. But in this case, it's just going to be, you're just paying two mana for a, uh, you're paying three mana for a two, two uh, with hex proof sort of ish, yeah. um, which is just, it's just not good enough. No, because it's going to get blocked by a two, two or by something bigger anyway. Yeah. So yeah, they're not going to be spending their removal on your stuff. On your tutus anyway yeah so just put aside it's also two blue but yeah. you know what would be cool with this card the last unblockable one. no the last one because one? you can make everything a merfolk ah uh, <laughs> no don't do that so next one is herald of secret streams three and a blue it's a two three merfolk warrior which you control with plus one plus one counts on them can't be blocked we haven't seen much with that puts a plus one plus one counts on things except for explore and all the colors have some explore, but it's not that much. And then you're paying two, uh, 
four mana for two three i don't think that's enough no it's just, just put aside yeah. just the body for 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 the price is not good enough so the ability needs to needs to make up for the cost and the problem is is that you just won't always have that and don't think to yourself hey but i've got a few i've got a few explorer cards because once again even if you do have a few explorer cards first you need to have this guy first Second of all, if uh, you may not draw the other one or you may draw the explore card, you may not draw this one, you might not draw either one of those two. And um, it's just, yeah, there's just too many scenarios where it's, it's not gonna do anything. Exactly, it's just, um, it's not enough. It will most of the times not do enough. No. Next card is Dream Color Siren for two and two blue. We got a three, three Siren Pirate with flash and flying. Okay, we looked at this card, similar card before uh, in the comments for five mana. So I was already super happy with that. This can, it can only block creatures with flying though. So that's kind of uh, the downside of it. But also when it enters the battlefield, if you control another pirate, tap up to two target non-land permanent. So that is pretty nice. I'm gonna say this is of course also tier two. We don't have to be blocking with our 3-3 three, three flyers because, of course, um, they're the ones that are going to be doing a lot of damage. But if our opponent, of course, does have a flyer and you think that they will attack and it is uh, does have 3 toughness or less, then you could keep it up and flash it in and block with it and then kill your opponent's flyer. So it's, it's, it's not as often going to be removable as the common one, but still, 3-3 three, three flyer with flash, nothing to sniff at. And, of course, potentially it has a small upside that it can tap to those uh, opponents. Uh, not my permanence. Next one, spell swindle. It's three and two blue. It's instant counter target spell. Create X colors uh, question uh, X target treasures, and X is converted uh, spells converted mana cost. So that's really cool, but not unlimited. It's five mana for counter spell. You uh, ramp yourself up um, as many as the converted mana cost of the spell you counted was. But is that really necessary when you're at five ma uh, mana and you keep that open all the time? So you have to, um, if you keep it, if you draw this, you want to keep the five mana open. You will counter the first thing you see. If it's a small thing, then it will not do anything. No. So no, it's gonna make you feel bad. Just put this aside. Especially when you're at four mana and they decide to play a four four creature and you're just like, okay, I can't even counter it because I don't have the mana for it. It's unfortunate. Then we have Rivers Rebuke for four and two blue. So for six mana, we get a sorcery. This is expensive, so better do something good. Return all non land permanents, target player controls his owner's hand. Yes. Yeah, this is pretty yes, good. it is pretty good. Okay, <laughs> good. This is tier one. Not only is this unconditional removal, it is multiple unconditional removal and it's also one-sided unconditional removal so this is pretty much as good as it gets yeah i mean it's the white one that you can exile uh, attacking creatures maybe a bit better no because they don't have to attack with this one so you That's get rid of all their stuff even the stuff that they kept behind so it's just it's extremely good if you yeah. if you pull this that you put it aside you say okay i am in blue all right i'm in blue that's for sure this, let's see what else we got this will win games like we said before this one that um taps all your opponent's creatures that's just like okay and that's already good it's also good, uh, yeah. we already said that will win games yeah and this one you have to this will win this game plus the next game as well. That's how good it is. If only. <laughs> if only. I don't think sometimes you know how work. magic works. Okay, well, but it should though. That's how good it is. <laughs> Alright, what's the last one? Fleet Swallower. 5 and 2 blue. It's a 6-6 six, six fish. Whenever Fleet Swallower uh, attacks, target player puts a half, uh, top half of his or her library rounded up into his or her graveyard. So. It will mill you, mill the half of your uh, opponent's deck every single turn, which is not that relevant because it's a six-six fish. Yeah, and they will die from this before they will get mulled out. For sure. Yeah, sure. Tier two, play this fish. Yeah, blue especially doesn't usually have very big stuff, so this is just if you're in blue, then you definitely want something like this to be able to start beating face. Yeah, exactly. Awesome, awesome. Those are the rares. Let's have a look at the mythics. The first of our mythics is Jace Cunning Castaway. For one and two blue, we got ourselves a three loyalty Planeswalker, uh, legendary Planeswalker. We have a small change to the Planeswalker rule. Before, you used to only be able to have, if it was uh, the type Jace, you could only have one Jace type, but now you can have as many Jace types, Planeswalkers as you want, as long as the name at the top is different. So you can have many different, yeah, 
differently named chases. Not very relevant for you when you're playing in limited, so let's look at what the abilities are of this Planeswalker. The plus one is whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player this turn, we're going to be able to draw a card and discard a card. Okay, so as long as we dealt damage with something, we're going to loot. Then the minus two is create a 2-2 two -two blue illusion creature token with whenever this creature gets targeted uh, by a spell or ability, we're going to sacrifice it. Oh, it actually only says spell, mm -hmm. so not by an ability. And finally, the minus five, so this is the, the ability, to, the ultimate, this is the one that should be winning the game. Create two tokens that are copies of Jace Cunning Castaway, except they're not legendary. So the, we're going to be making... We're going to have, well, you're not, you're not going to be handy to have them all make sure that you're going to be looting. So you're probably going to be making some more tokens with that. And then slowly but surely, you're going to be creating a large, larger army. So that's pretty sweet. We can go really into it. But the point is, is that as always with these things, Planeswalkers are tier one in limited. Always. They always win you games. Because they're essentially another spellcaster. Uh, and that's extremely good value every single turn. Um, yeah, what do you? What else can we say about it? It's already a three mana two two, so that's already nice. And why wouldn't you loot with the copies? Because every copy will yeah. get you extra loot. Yeah, because I was thinking maybe with one you're looting, the other one's going to be making creatures, so you can get a better board state. But it's also the minus, so you're going to have to be plusing, so you have to balance it. Out. It doesn't really matter. It's a planeswalker, and it's going to win. Play it. Yeah, Just exactly. play it. Overflowing insight. Four and three blue is a sorcery, and target player draws seven cards. I'm I really like drawing cards. I really do like drawing cards, but seven mana. I don't think it's worth it at that point anymore. I mean, you're paying seven mana. If you're not dying, then it's fine. But if you're like a behind and you don't, and you're not doing anything else than refilling your hand. That sounds actually really bad. Like, it's really good to refill your hand, but still, it's you're not doing anything on the board. That's why I don't really like it. But I understand your point. <laughs> this is something that we had a great discussion about before. Um, I also don't like uh, paying all my mana and doing nothing in a turn. However, we have seen situations in the past where we have an enchantment or a bomb or something which is so insanely powerful that on the turn we play that and of course it does nothing because the creature can't attack or because the enchantment you know doesn't do anything other than give us great can value. Block. Okay, sure. Anyway, okay, fine. Not the creature, <laughs> but we have seen enchantments and sorceries which are insanely powerful. You do nothing else that turn, but you're basically going to be winning the game after that. And I think this is exactly one of those cards. Sure, you don't do anything on that turn seven or turn eight or nine or whenever you're playing this thing, but it refills your hand completely. And you're going to be getting all your best stuff if you do that, because you're limited. You're playing with 40 card deck and drawing seven, in my opinion, will probably get you pretty much everything you want, all your best stuff out of your deck. And I think that is going to swing the game. If you can just survive that one turn, then you're pretty much winning. So. I understand the perspective that there are situations where you're losing, you draw this, you, you refill your hand, you're still not winning and then you're dead. That also happens, but there's also going to be, I think, many situations where you're stalling out, you do have some of some board state and you just need to get that better stuff that your opponent and you're down to, to one or two cards, you're both down to one or two cards and now all of a sudden you have seven extra cards, your opponent is drawing that one extra and that's just going to be, that's just going to win you the game. So. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put it in tier three, but Stefan says don't play it. I would probably always play it, so we're putting it uh, tier three yeah, in between us. Because it's still card drawing, and I don't like it because um, you have to survive that one turn to actually hope that you draw, draw good cards. So. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, and I it's disagree. A, I, so think, <laughs> I think I think I think in the end yeah. it's. Um, if you need something, um, this might be it, just tier 3, but not much better. I would play it, always play it. Alright, great, awesome. Those are the mythics, so I'm gonna look at the conclusion. In conclusion, I think blue is probably the strongest color of the set. It's been a long time since I've seen a set where blue has been pushed so hard, in my opinion. Usually I find uh, blue a little bit more difficult to play in limited because it's, uh, it doesn't have the, the fatties that, uh, that uh, um, green has, for example, or the flyers are a little bit weaker. Everything seems like a little bit weaker, but this one, for this set, that is completely not the case. 
The commons are insane. The uncommons are insane. The rares are decent and we have a big discussion about the mythics. So as you know, the, there's just so many good cards and not only are, uh, are the, um, the commons good or the uncommons good, but even the filler cards are on the high level spectrum of, filler, uh, of the filler spot. And the removal in the sense, not the counter spells, but the, the bounce spells, usually we don't like those because you know, you're losing a card and they get to recast it, but now they're pushed. They got all this extra stuff tacked on, which makes them so much more valuable. And I think that uh, blue is gonna be a great contender for being your main color. Yeah, and just such um, good flyers. And the big creatures, Blue normally doesn't have any big creatures. Now you have so many big creatures and all those creatures and all of the smaller creatures, they have some loot effects and draw effects and just evasion. Exactly, yeah. so good. Blockable. Yes. Yeah. So many solid ways to yeah. dig through your deck. Mm -hmm. So not only are the, the, the blue cards good, so normally that would be fine in, uh, or sorry, it allows you to uh, have the good cards, but also the digging through your deck, which usually you would use blue as a secondary color. Now it's already your primary color. So you're getting that extra bonus of draw and scry and uh, explore. You're getting that as a dish in addition to that. And that just makes blue a very attractive color to play. Exactly, I think. because we normally have the main color, like your big things, how you win yeah. and support color. And blue is normally a sport color because you draw your cards, but now it's also is your main color because it has so many big creatures good stuff, yeah. and it also good support. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunately we can't play it because it has no dinosaurs, so we can't play it. That's certainly that's true. such a shame. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, well, you get your pirates, so that's good. Yeah, you got some treasure. Get some treasure. You got your pirates. Go the pirate way, man, because blue is. Super awesome. This is why you play in other um, color with it. Exactly. Yeah, so you can play some dinosaurs. dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, well, now I'd like to remind you one more time that we have a Patreon page. If you want to help us out, you want to support the channel, please go over to patreon.com slash budget MTG decks. We really appreciate it. Also join us on Facebook and Twitter at budget MTG decks. Have a discussion with us, for example, like the card Overflowing Insight that we just had a big discussion. Tell us what you think of Overflowing Insight. Would you be playing it in Limited? Would you be playing it in Sealed or in Draft? Or are we crazy for, am I crazy for pushing it and it stays on uh, the, the quiet, uh, well, I'd say quiet is not that quiet, but brilliant for suggesting that you don't play. So which one of us is right? Please tweet at us and let us know your opinions. Also, you're here on the channel, so why not subscribe? hit that red button and also hit that bell button so you get notified when the new video comes out. Next video is gonna be, of course, the black card. So join us for that. That's it, thanks for watching. I'm David. I'm Stefan. This was Budget MTGX.